Hi, everybody. Welcome back. My name is Mr. Campbell from MrCampbellRocks.com with another tutorial. This is a special request tutorial for somebody that sent me an email, and I thought, you know what, this would be helpful for everybody. So what we're doing here is we're actually using Google Meet to see my whole class, and we also have a Google Doc open that's been shared with my class, and so we can annotate something together. Um, I know there's Jamboard for students. A lot of them are on their phone or on an iPad or a Chromebook. It's kind of hard to draw with a trackpad. Um, and so this may or may not be the answer that you're looking for, but this is something that I put together that I think would be helpful to, um, to teachers and students that want to use the same document. It could be a spreadsheet. It could be a form. Um, but that doesn't really matter. But here's the setup. So on the right side of the screen, I am uh, presenting in this Google Meet. I've got one, two, three, four students, and I'm also presenting my screen. That's why you see six people up here. I've mu muted myself and volume everything over there. On the left side of the screen, you'll actually see a Google document. This is something I used as a teacher when I taught ninth grade, uh, when we read Fahrenheit 451, as I wanted students to go through and annotate to save us a little bit of time when we went through uh, the text in class. So we didn't actually read it in class together. They read it and annotate on their own. So the way that I can annotate this is first as I give my students a legend of what I want them to annotate, what am I having them look for or look at? Um, it, it, and some teachers may be using the traditional editing tools where there's like 30 or 40 marks. I kept it very, very simple. Um, and I just use these four uh, annotation marks that students could put in. The nice thing now is back then Google didn't have necessarily the comments that were as easy they were now is as a teacher, I can highlight things and make a comment right here and all of my students can see. So if all of your students are in the same document, all of the students could be commenting on this and editing or annotating this together. So this is what it looks like from the teacher side. Let's jump over to the student side. So over on the student side, this is my son's account. I've shared this document with him. He can go through, and if he has split screen or not, that's fine. He can hear you, right? Or the student can hear you. This is what the student is seeing now on their screen, which is the teacher's view of the Google document. And then they have the Google document here. And what you'll notice is it's hard to show you both of these at the same time is when I make a comment as a student, right? I highlight something and then I like uh, fierce grin, which is an oxymoron, right? Uh, if we're talking about language and different things like that. Um, so I can comment right there. What will happen over on the teacher side of things is you just saw that move up as I saw that Noah Campbell annotated this right here and he could share more thoughts if he wanted. But then I can actually have five or six, maybe up to 10 students in a Google Meet at the same time working on a piece of text together. And so um, this may or may not work for you. Some people are using Jamboard, which is fine. I think once you get a bunch of kids into Jamboard, it just becomes a sloppy mess. So either way, whether you're annotating in Jamboard or a whiteboard or a Google Doc or a sheet or something like that, I think the best way as far as best practices goes would to be using these tools in a small group uh, of students, maybe, maybe four to seven. If you're elementary, maybe even less than that, right? Because you know, three or four might work as they get older, they're a little bit, a little bit more responsible and, and the tools are, are not as um, new to them because they've been using them for a long time. And so they're not going to be goofing around and writing stuff and different things like that. Um, again, if this um, saved you time, saved you energy, saved you frustration, I would love it if you would share it with other teachers or people in your building. Um, Go ahead and subscribe and like and all those things that you do on a YouTube channel to uh, show appreciation uh, to the creator of the content. Uh, again, I hope this brought you value. If you're here, it's because you want to do what's best for kids. I love you. I appreciate you. And I'm glad that you're here.